the uh, results page. Uh, and for distractions, none for now. So I'm cool. Uh, and I pass it on to you, Griff. Um, I was distracted by getting the YouTube set up. Thank you so much, Marco, as always. Uh, I don't know how I always forget. Um, it's almost like a, a meme for this call. Uh, and yeah. then uh, <laughs> as far as intentions, uh, just the same old, same old, go through the board, see where we're at, see what we need to do for public release. Very excited to hear from Danny on uh, from the Radical Exchange. And uh, of course, uh, hear all the updates on the front end and back end. Uh, as far as distractions, I have none. Uh, just some coffee in front of me. And I'll pass it to Lauren. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, my intentions for the call are just to, to sync up with everybody and continue pushing forward. Um, yeah, I'm feeling really excited today. I'm excited to be part of this team and happy to be here. Um, my distractions, I don't have any distractions. I have to go to the bathroom. I'm going to go in a minute, but um, yeah, uh, I'll pass it to Victor. Hey guys, uh, for intentions, uh, I have some thoughts on the backend stuff and like like more looking at the higher level stuff and how they imagine to play the game and, and how does it uh, work with the score. I've been looking for a few uh, materials on that and I, I would like to share it with you guys, show a lot of, a lot of uh, I feel backend stuff and see how the rest is going on. And I don't have any distraction. I will pass it to Fabio. So hello, everyone. I'm excited too for the public release. Uh, intentions, basically walk through the board and assign some issues, maybe new issues. And of course, uh, make a quick overview about the last updates on front end development. Um, no distractions for today. I will pass to Merlin. So hi everyone. So for distractions, um, I, I'm with uh, some friends at Montaigne, so there are some noise, and but it's okay. And for what I want from this call is uh, just to have a quick update from uh, the previous uh, release uh, to know if uh, we 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 had some feedback from users. And uh, and see what I, we can do on the front end part to improve that. And that's it. Uh, I think I'll pass to Danny, maybe. Hello. Good morning. So let's see. My intentions are just to check in on the the big edit that Lauren was amazing at organizing all of the thoughts between what's in the flow and what was in the help text which didn't I, I was so grateful a that lauren started that process and we worked through it yesterday i think it makes it a whole lot cleaner and i'd really like to have those edits in it when i review it with radical exchange so just wanted that's my intention is to find out when we can do that and uh other than that uh, I'm here because y'all are awesome and I want to see what the next step is after that edit and to organize the, the launch details. Uh, did Lauren make it here yet? Uh, I'll pass it to her. Yay. Oh, I already went. Um, I'll pass it to, we can pass it to Fabio or Petra or Freedoms. Petra. Petra, are you there? You're muted, Petra. No. It was frozen. It's Matt Verde. <laughs> your, your, your connection is really bad, Meta Verde, but you froze on the exactly. thumbs up, so that was cool. Uh, <laughs> It's okay. Let's see. Uh, you want to keep keep trying with the video off? No, we can't hear you at all. So uh, let's go to Jake. Sorry, Pat. What's Sorry. Up, okay. Uh, quickly, intentions. Uh, see how close this is. Uh, and I'm here to act 
recruit and steal. I'm actually here to thieve. I'm here to steal help. Uh, I don't really, like, I, I just flat out, I'm here to steal help. Me and Vitor are doing some stuff with tech params, which I'm a part of. Anyways, my home run hitter had to step out for a while. Anyways, YGG's got other stuff he's got to do, and that's cool. But I need some, I need, I need people to step up and uh, come take part. So I'm here to steal. So Merlin, uh, Lauren, I mean, everybody, like, I'm, I'm here to steal. So, like, if you got bandwidth, you got time, Fabio, I know you're a hitter. Uh, come, come on down to Tech Params. I'm here to just check it out, but no, I'm here to steal. I'm here to steal. You need to play on my team, okay? Forget this team. You need to finish this and come play for me. That's what we need to do right now. We got yeah. lots going on, and it's Tech Params. Okay, uh, that's it. I'm out. Jake, if, if Santi comes in, make sure to DM him. That's that's who. That's I'm, 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 uh, yeah, I'm already on top of that. Uh, but yeah, I'm here to steal. Great. Uh, okay, cool. So then, oh, Danny wants back in. Okay, well, let's start with uh, Danny. Are you still there? Do you want to start with Radical Exchange? Oh well, luckily Danny is. Still coming, but Santiago just joined. Sorry, it's okay. We'll let we'll let Santiago check in first. Hey, hey Santi. Hey, uh, how are you? Great. Intentions, distractions. Yeah, well, for this this week, I uh, we just want to catch up with uh, all the work that uh, everyone has been doing for the Common Simulator and the Common Games and distractions. Well, uh, in Denver is happening this week, so a lot of talks, a lot of hacking. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. Nice. Uh, okay. Well, let's let's start with uh, Danny on Radical Exchange. Yeah. So I've been talking to Fanny. Um, Matt really wants to uh, go over that edits, but he just he just didn't have the bandwidth this week. So he promises he'll he'll make time for this next week. Um, in the meantime, uh, I, Lauren, and I made some really great edits that I think will help, and also some other suggestions. Uh, to think about going into that meeting with them that I think we can put just a little bit more of the fun back into the language uh, and and get back to the story a little more where it is a little bit later. Uh, it just kind of drops into all the graphs and the stuff and it felt like the, the gamification kind of disappeared a little bit. So that's what we were looking to restore a little. And, um, and also the feedback from Radical Exchange was is there anything about their core concepts at all that we, we can work into that? And I said, let's just get together and look at it and see where that makes sense from your perspective. So I really hope to have that meeting with Matt next week. I just pinged Fanny again and asked her for it. I, I don't think I would hold up the launch for their feedback at a minimum. They've already agreed that they'll retweet and share it and they're excited at least for that much. Okay, that's great. Um, is there anything specifically that you need from us to make that make that awesome? Make that really awesome. I, well, so that was the thing that Lauren and I really looked at yesterday because to me, the word help up in the corner, that was not intuitive at all that that meant more of the story is under that. To me, when I see help, it means I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. So changing that that to some sort of like tool tips so that when you mouse over images it pops something up that tells you you know more information is available for more of the story something like that because to me help just means i'm stuck but really the rest of the story is buried in that help file so so that was what we were looking at is how to make that more interactive and intuitive Cool. Awesome. Uh, well, that sounds good. And I assume that there'll be more, more news on that as we go. Uh, let's go with uh, user feedback. Actually, Merlin, you mentioned something about user feedback, and I thought maybe that would be good to, uh, to dive into. Uh, maybe we could just do a round of like, maybe it's not all captured in GitHub, but uh, it, did we get any user feedback? So like, I'll, I'll start. Uh, does this does this work for you, Merlin? Like a round of user feedback uh, stories? Uh, yeah. Um, 
just uh, to be clear, I don't have any uh, you, uh, feed, user feedback uh, to to give uh, to, but no. uh, but I'm you just it, for right? others to 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 say if they if they have uh, anything to to say about uh, the front end and stuff like that. So I'm just yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So I was just going to do a round because I'm sure we've all been talking to people or some of us at least have been talking to people about it. I know I have. And so actually what Danny just said uh, was some user feedback that um, Eduardo from uh, TEC onboarding working group mentioned was that like the story is awesome. And then you start picking parameters and it's like, what happened to the story? Um, like there was like, it, it like disconnects and all of a sudden it's like I'm picking a bunch of parameters and it feels it fills off the game. The game stops being fun at the picking parameters. So, um, and uh, I got another feedback. Uh, well, I think I made GitHub issues for the other feedbacks. So, uh, but I'll pass it to Lauren. Did you have any user feedback? And then we'll just do a round. Mm, no, I mean, just what Danny already mentioned about like the help thing and then, but I actually like changed all the text to it and I like sent it to Fabio to incorporate it. So that it was also very confusing. Like I, I was a user and my user feedback was that as I was like going through it, like I'd click the help section and then there would be like random quotations or like that seemed random because they were cut from the other story. But, and then anyway, I just like rewrote it all and then I sent it to Fabio I think or maybe put it in. Um, yeah, anyway, um, should I just pass it to someone? Okay, uh, I'll pass it to Marco. Do you have any user feedback? Yeah, I don't have any feedback. So I pass it on to whoever has feedback, raise your hand. Danny, I mean, maybe you, I mean, you already said something, but maybe if there's anything. Yeah, more. I incorporated all my user feedback into the, the, the notes that Lauren have there. We worked on that fully together. So everything, the feedback that I have is incorporated in the issues, both the full text one that she sent and two others about tooltips and things. Okay, can I jump in? Okay. Thanks, Griff. Anyways, uh, as far as user feedback, I would echo a word uh, because the game does end, but I will also ask the challenge, like in the sense, what is it supposed to look like? Um, you know, I mean, I, I appreciate that, yeah, the game ends and it's not very fun just picking parameters, but what should it look like after that? So they pick a parameter and then what, there's a next stage in the story. I mean, what, what, what should it look like? Yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a good observation and a good question actually, because like after, after you pick a parameter, maybe there should be another part of the story. Um, and then, but that could, I don't know, maybe that could take a long time then. I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. We're adding a lot more work now to try and continue this story. So how can we, how can we shorten it? Like, how can we still make people feel interactive, but yet not make this even more than it already is? Like, yeah. Like if, if this was like a, <clears throat> you know, a traditional game, like if we developed that, like, a, like a real game, you know, um, like you play on a PlayStation or whatever, uh, then there would be some sort of, sort of a story. You would like, you know, we'll see a character moving somewhere, going somewhere, doing some stuff, and then discovering something new or whatever. But Maybe. you know, initially, initially yeah. we didn't have the bandwidth to do all that stuff, so we just we just started to like created the introduction, which is pretty long, uh, and you I mean you have to you know have to read through that and click through that or whatever, or you know see the slides. And then you you pick the parameters. Now adding that after each level uh, would be super long. I mean, too, too much. Yeah. What if what if maybe just like uh, like in a game? So after they've picked a, like a, a series of parameters, there's like an interlude. Like like okay, so like they go to this. All of a sudden, this new page shows up, and it's like you are here, or or something like that. Like like a, like a break in the game, and then it's just one more page, and that's it. Hey. And it's it's quick, it's brief, you know, it's just like a quick, so it keeps them in the loop, but, and then boom, they can keep picking the rest of, like maybe the two, the last two parameters and then boom, it's in. 
maybe we are, yeah we already have actually that and after each level after each parameter you you uh, define you actually get a new screen a new page where it says great awesome or you're on a roll or you know well done and then some text over there so basically we try to kind of do that already uh, and we have it there obviously that's not enough uh, you know to keep the momentum of the game i, I guess but we have the we have the map on the side kind of that's always there like hatch da, 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 that's like a navigation menu it sounds like a jake is suggesting like a some kind of road turning that into a, a road map with like check marks so people feel like they're accomplishing something as well they, yeah yeah I, all all I'm, yeah I, that all i'm trying like i'm just trying to highlight eduardo's cuz it was real and i i kind of noticed that too and now that it's like been said, I like, yeah, I felt that too. Um, so how do you fix it though? So I think, I think like what Grip just said, something simple and just like visual is, is, is awesome. Um, I, I don't want to like, cause I just jumped into this to steal people, but the, the <laughs> truth is like, you know, <laughs> the truth is like, I've done it too i played the simulator it's fun you guys are fucking not you're awesome you're doing it uh but like griff said like how how can we keep them in the game and and you know still make it a game and i think a dashboard's cool i think something that shows them like they okay they've made through this or that and maybe maybe just one more i don't know maybe just one page that's just like shows something of where they are you know in the game like because I could, I don't know what to say about that though. Because that could seems like a lot of work as well. Because whether they're progressing bad or good, you could have a whole nother, you know, like at the end of the mm -hmm. game, if you didn't pick a good future, then you're still in Mad Max Apocalypto, you know, like it's horrible. So like if after like four or five params and you show this thing up and and then they're still in Apocalypto, then like I don't know. I don't want it to be complicated. I only, I only, I only put this question up there to like how do we actually like to create directive so how do we actually do this you know so i i think griff's right though or maybe maybe you should just formulate something else but you guys have already done so much and accomplished so much i don't want to see this turn into another you know month two month project because you're trying to figure out how to keep people in the video game that's certainly not what anybody wants yeah so I do think that giving a feeling of accomplishment uh, more than just the text, because like, I don't know, the text, you read this text or you, you don't read the text. That's you don't read the text. No one reads the text. No one reads the text. No one reads the text. So, so uh, I mean, the text is good because people need to be able to understand what the hell the parameter was that they just chose, right? So we can't get rid of the text, but we could add some... We could like maybe instead of having the sense of accomplishment be above all this text, give the sense of accomplishment in a new page that just maybe we com can combine it with some other needs like radical exchange fact or factoid or something. Um, like a one sentence about like radical exchange being awesome and then or, or something, but then having a map or a, 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 a level bar or like a treasure map where it's like, okay, hatchers checked, community check, right? Like community parameters check. I don't know, like some, some accomplishment and progress as they, as they play. A level bar is really good. Level bar is really very gamey. So I think a level bar about where they're at is, is awesome. Don't, don't we already have that? Isn't yeah. that there? Yeah. I mean, maybe we just need to emphasize it a little bit. Yeah, I was thinking when Griff was talking, it'd be cool if it was like with check marks, like literal check marks and like the dotted line in between, then it would look really like, oh, I'm moving forward and like crunching down the things, crunching down the parameters. And probably its own page, you know, that they have to click through because like, it's just like cluttered right now a little bit because like, you don't look at it, you don't notice it, you don't feel it. But if we like slam it in their face, you're doing it. You're doing it. You know, like boom. <laughs> Next. This boom. is 
That's exactly what I was saying to Lauren when we were looking at it. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm missing that comic book feeling, like the pow and the bam and the, like, yeah, the, there's, there's just a little something that the text does not deliver, which I think results in people not reading the text. Okay, does anyone else have any user feedback? Uh, I, I kind of want to put everyone on the spot to say something and or pass. So that's just usually better than this asking the void. Screw that. Uh, Fabio, do you have any user feedback? No, actually I don't. Vitor, do you have any? Yeah. Actually, I will ask a few feedbacks on this car later, but uh, I have some ideas on the on this failing stuff, but I can send on the on the telegram, like with the image. You can also say it. It's okay. <laughs> no, it was just that I was doing a boot camp and there they have a really nice layout for like you're doing some classes and then when you do there is a animation of thing, things filling up and then you click to check stuff and it might be nice but it's more a design stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, what about you Santiago? Do you have any user feedback that you'd want to give? Uh, no, not, not actually. Perfect. Then we can move on but that was a, I think a very fruitful discussion. Um, so next is showing off front end work. Uh, Fabio, uh, I assume you could leave this. Sure, just a second. Okay, I will start and I pass to Merlin. Uh, let me share my screen. Can you see it? Okay, so Basically, I've been working uh, with text changes. So as Lawrence said, he created uh, an issue here with, uh, uh, let me load, with a uh, docs a document. And he has, uh, she has a lot of suggestions about the, the models content, like, uh, okay. So we, ha we have, uh, at each level, we have uh, a model pop-up and Lauren uh, right down here, a lot of suggestions for new contents that could be placed into the, the models. So I did it. Uh, I think I didn't have to like show all of the models, but I promised that I did. So I can maybe pick up some random level here, <laughs> but let me see. So yeah, we have the help here and it's a, a new content. We can check it out here, conviction voting. And I really like it because it's very, very like, it has a lot of description about the, the process, right? The conviction voting, the exit tribute, the funding distribution, it has a lot of text. And I think it would be nice for the users to understand better the, the game. So I did it and also the other main activity that I've been working is the results page. So Victor sent me the, the data with the good charts, right? He sent me the data of the funny pool good chart, the sentiment pool, the sentiment good chart and the token price good chart. So now when we click here, we can take a look at the good chart, right? So this is a token price, good price. This is a sentiment, good price, good chart. And this is a funding pool, good chart. Okay. I think that's it. Any questions, any feedbacks? I, I guess- I, I was talking- I This think, is mostly- I, I was just thinking about maybe place the, the charts uh, side by side, you know, like, because here we just have the good chart, but I can't see my own chart. So I can't compare those things to know, like, uh, when it's wrong, when I could improve it. 
So maybe we could place both charts here and see like the good chart and your chart. Maybe it would be an idea. Can we can we have a button for the, like overlay chart? Like show my chart and when I just click on it, it just overlays the current one? Yeah, we can have two, two, two lines maybe. Yeah, I could All do right. Honestly, I'm a little surprised that the good charts don't look that good. I thought that'd be that. I thought, <laughs> I thought they, they would, like the funding pool would be higher at the end here. The price wouldn't have so many dips. I don't know. I, I'm curious, Vitor. How good are oh, these? Uh, yeah, this is the point that I was going to, to say because I got, I made, I ran some tests on this, but uh, like the funding pool, the idea was that the it needed to have a good average and a good span. So you need to have like both. You don't need only to grow up. And I think it's a, and I got those from the older metrics. So I changed them now. So I maybe can rerun it to get a few other results. But the issue is that after, after I did this, like I run, uh, run many, many parameter sweeps. Then I saw that in the API, we we're sending a different uh, unlock time, like it's 60 still in the front end. So it was not getting, like, even if I change in the back end, it's still in the front end. We need to change this because in the back end, it's like 120 days, and this was like not getting the best results. So, like, honestly, they are not like the best possible because we need, we needed the, those stuff to change. But, like, I just, I sent to Fabio like good ones, not the best possible. So I could do this, and then we can, we can just like change the data. So like I ch I change it uh, this course this week, so I have the pull request open. So like my idea is like since we close the pull request, I can rerun it, try other parameters, and then get it. And also we can get a like we can kind of refactor those because these those are like getting from the simulation. We can change those as well. So my idea is try to change them. And are these, is this all, all three graphs from the same simulation or uh, is it, because I hope that oh, I, we actually can just be like, oh, this was a really good funding pool, although the price and da 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 sucked. That's okay. This was a good funding pool, you know? Yeah, that was, that was what I did. Like I got okay. three parameters. Yeah, because it's, it, you kind of cannot get everything perfect. So it's you have trade-offs. So yeah, but I will improve it this week. Uh, after the the points got improved, I mostly like sent to not block the front end. Nice, thank you. The good call, Vitor. Uh, okay, uh, that was my question. Anyone else have any other thoughts or questions for Fabio? No, I would I would just jump in really quickly too. But you guys already tackled it. Uh, the fact that this graph that I'm viewing on Fabio's screen for funding pool is absolute, I mean, this is horrendous. No one would want to put money in that. That, that is like, you, that's, that's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> you wouldn't, that's death. That is death. If you're a trader or you're an investor and you stare at this, that's death. That's death. You have support at the bottom of a giant BART and, it, and then it ends. It, like, that's like, it's horrible. Well, it's not the price chart. It's no, but it, it, it like, uh, dude, this is just as bad. You don't, you don't want to look at that at all. Like, but anyways, it doesn't matter. You guys already, you already tackled that. So you can get different numbers and do it. Hold on. Hold on. Solo. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, but I, I agree in this, in kind of in this point that I just went by the score like not for the qualitative uh, point of view, but I think it would be nice to merge those steps. So like run parameter sweeps, get a, like, get a set of say 10 good graphs and then maybe align with you, Griff, or with Marco and other people just to get sure that it's right. So like I'd more like got a few ones, 10 Fabio just to get it, but I think we need to do this in this sprint. That's a great yeah. way to do it. Get 10 good graphs and then have people vote on them in our, in our telegram or something which one looks like the best just to get that um human qualitative uh congruence with what our metrics actually are as well so 
I, I think that's a great idea. Is there anything that explains why that's a good chart? Like is the big green thing in the middle a good thing and it dropping down makes it good? Like, I, I guess I'm just coming from the perspective that I don't need to understand that part, but I definitely really don't understand it. You know, it would be good if this text here was more talking about metrics than the than like what the funding pool is because we give all the funding pool explanations in the adventure but then here it's like well what does a good chart look like and it's like defining it again and it's like well okay yeah i just want to know the metrics yeah we already read this text elsewhere i almost feel like it should say the chart below is an example of a successful commons because these are the factors you should look for. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then uh, yeah. Vitor's got his metrics right now. Sorry, Vitor. Yeah, 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 because we have a few metrics. I think there are like three metrics for if, like in the score for defining <laughs> what is a good funding pool. We might show it like in this example, like they show the results for those metrics that you're using like average, uh, average amount in the funding pool, average span, stuff like that maybe just to make it more like uh, an example of it. Can, uh, can, can I ask someone to make a, uh, who would be willing to make some GitHub issues for this? Because this feels like it needs an issue, like in, uh, improving the funding pool text to include metrics. Um, maybe I can pass it to Lauren to, to make some sure. GitHub issues. Sure, sure, I can make that. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, okay, uh, maybe, uh, I think we've studied, I think there was a lot of discussion on this. Maybe we can move to Merlin. Merlin, did you have any updates on the front end that you wanted to give? Yeah. Mm, not much because uh, <laughs> as I told you, uh, I'm not in the break, but um, I just um, change the images. And uh, Fabio will maybe merge uh, the pull request and um, yeah, uh, just uh, change the images to progressive JPEGs. I guess it will work. I tried uh, some tools, but it's not, um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm using the, the right tool and maybe it could be better if uh, next time we start from um, uh, from the ground, like uh, create, uh, creating a, a new image, maybe pass it to directly to uh, progressive JPEG, and uh, so we uh, we don't have to 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 have the process uh, to transform the image afterwards. I don't know, and mm -hmm. so. That's it. And I will review the, the pull request, uh, Fabio's pull request. I didn't check, uh, but uh, I will. And that's it. I think it's, um, yeah, I just did that. Okay, cool. Uh, no, thanks. Thanks, Merlin. Uh, great updates. And thank you for the progressive JPEG work. Uh, there's also, uh, I guess we can move on to backend. Uh, Vitor, do you want to talk about the backend? Sure. Uh, basically, uh, we had a, we had we have right now basically two issues like regarding the backend backend. Like we need we had a issue from network edges overhead. That we we want it was we were wanting to decrease the runtime, and we were having some issues with the score metrics because they were raising like our ideal is to get it between like zero to a thousand, but they were like going to three thousand and stuff depending on the the inputs. Like we were having crazy results, and I tried to fix it because. Now, uh, like you had, we had, we had kind of a radio of stuff. We we're kind of normalized things, trying to get like each. We have nine metrics. We wanted everyone to get like from zero to one. So then we multiply this for hundred and twelve. So everyone, if every 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 metric is like one, we get like thousand close to this or less. Then I kept those. So like now, if you, uh, I 
like our metrics were too sensitive. So a few metrics we're getting like instead of one, we're getting like 10 or 15. So I rescaled them and added a limit. So now you can't get more if like it's it's hard to get one, but if goes more than one, like doesn't change because the idea is for you to have a have a have a good uh commons, like everything is good. So even though we have like an extremely high funding pool, if you don't have like many proposals getting funded and a bad sentiment, you will not you won't have a good uh a, a so so good uh funding uh commons. So the idea was like to make uh so you need to get every metric good to to make it happen so this is implemented already and the second so like now you can't go more than a thousand and the second point was uh fan notice because many of our, our our score metrics were based on having a compared to the initial so if you have really low amount of hatchers you would eventually get a higher score uh so i changed a few, a few things on there and added a few uh penalties i can show you guys let me check let me get in here dude i can i think i can share my screen Oh, now we work. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, looks good. Okay, so now I basically changed a few things in here. So, uh, like I added some penalties. So, like if our, our final price is like less than eighty percent of our hedge price, like instead of getting giving points, we are like deducting points. It is arbitrary. We can fine tune this, but the idea is that. You have a punctuation here, but if it's low, lower than a threshold, you just lose points. Because it's kind of the acceptance, uh, it's kind of an acceptance criteria. Like if you don't have this, it's gonna be a bad comments. And I added this to you as well to the average price compared to the hedge price. So it's like if it's up, if your your average price is lower than your hedge price, you're gonna uh, have penalties. And of course, we can change those. Uh, those uh, thresholds and the deduction uh, as well as in here we have like uh, now we get the minimum sentiment as well so if you have your minimum sentiments lower than like 0 0.5 you have penalties so I added a few penalties in here and this makes that your uh, the uh, like the it's harder to have a good comments and before like since you got only absolute numbers, if you had some times of, of stuff that shouldn't be happening, you would still get give have a good result. So my idea is to try to add this up and then kind of test with you guys too, because it's really different like from me just doing some parameter sweeps and people keep trying to play and, and trying to see what good results are. So like when I, run parameter sweep it went it went fine like you could have like results as high as like 800 900 but like three and as well as like 300 200 so it was sparse but it's different from like the user uh of like user experience so this is one point and other idea that i think you can change on the front end is that we have a, a regular like a default values for stuff if you never play in the website and you go there and I think we should have a bad result in there, just just in case, because if you like, if you just go in there and put, and put everything in, and just keep entering everything and get a good result, it's kind of weird. I, I don't know, like if you guys agree with it, because it's like too easy. But and you know, yeah. I I kind of like like a sixty five percent winning. <laughs> Yo, I don't know about you guys. Um, what, what do you guys think? Like, how often should people win and how often should people lose? That's a bit, good point. You're, you're, you're out of the park, dude. Like, 65% is perfect. Like, it's above, it's more than above 50, it, it, but it doesn't show too much. Like, there's room. It, it's perfect. 65, just that, that whole little, I don't know how to explain this about human and behavior, but 
like trading in the zone. That's not what this is, but like 62 to 67% is perfect. It's perfect. Anyone else have Great. a thought? You want to throw out a number? Marco, I want to hear your thoughts. How many people should win? No, I'm not that good at this. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest anything really. No. It's too much for me. <laughs> I thought you were like me. You can always have an opinion. Uh, <laughs> Come on and play. Come on, Marco. I don't, Come I don't on. wanna I don't wanna throw a number out there. Yeah, I just just not nah nah. I leave that guys for, to you guys. You're better at this. Okay, okay. Well, if no one disagrees, then I, I, I mean, whatever the, you know, if, if we do a, a bunch of user testing and did we, we started recording people's inputs, right? In scores. Yeah. So we should be able to figure out like what the average score is and the distribution of scores and, and pick the good or bad future based off of that after enough test drives, I would assume. Um, I'm super curious what it is right now. Like what percentage of what we've run through has won? I, I don't have the this information. I can like what I can do is get all the inputs and try to rerun the new metrics or in the metrics there are now and, and check out. We can do this. We can just get in there and look because it's a little bit hard to when you do parameters. So if you lock one and go to the other, so you would need another kind of testing. But I can do this. You can like put everything and keep track like. Uh, imagine you have like 65% of acceptance and then getting all the inputs, well, all the previews and try to rerun and get a metric close to that. I think it's- Yeah. Good. Yeah, I don't, I, I mean, I, I feel like it, it would be expected that about half and half would be winning right now. And then over time that increases. Yeah, that's true, right? Um, random guesses, out of random guesses, maybe only half. But I don't know, it's hard, it's hard. What do you think, Danny? If you had to say for this, you would say 50-50 is the right ratio? No, I'm leaning more towards 60. Like, I, I mean, I'm going back and forth on it. Like part of me is thinking you probably wouldn't win the first time because you want to go back, we want them to go back and do it again and see what's different. So that keeps me down towards the 50% mark. Cool. Okay, well, let's just keep pushing because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, did you have anything else to present uh, on the back end? That's a lot of great work, Vitor. Uh, this is really cool. I have, uh, let me check. I have only one more thing that is a suggestion for having a, a average, uh, average value for token price and sentiment. Uh, when you look at the voting speed, we have the dashed line horizontally. And I just thought that it would be nice to have like this average line on the results. Because when I was looking at it and trying to get like, what is my result uh, qualitatively, qualitatively, it was hard to try to imagine what was the average value because it changes a lot, but just a suggestion. But that's it for me. Okay. Um, well, Santi, did you have anything? Uh, no, not actually. I, uh, last week I didn't have enough bandwidth to work on this, but uh, thanks uh, Peter for helping um, Fabio with the good charts. Um, yeah, I, I, I will catch up with the, with the score things uh, um, this, week, this week and see how we can improve it. Um, I think that maybe one good idea would be like as everyone ha are in different time zones, Maybe it would be good, like to, um, I don't know, set a, a time in the, in, during the night so everyone like can try to run a few simulations through the front end, so we can have these as the data is being uh, stored on the back end already. We can have like this data, and so we can analyze them later. And for example, we can uh, evaluate what would be like the threshold for winning uh, and losing. Yeah. But uh, we need some data from the from the simulations. Yeah, that would be like a good also a good idea for battle testing the backend because if we when we release when the public release goes out maybe the backend will burn if everyone starts using it at the same time. I don't know. Yeah. 
So you want to try to schedule a, uh, a time where we all test at the same moment and just like attack it? Uh, that could be also another idea, good, good idea, but maybe for just getting some data, for example, maybe, I don't know, maybe we can say like everyone's just start doing some tests at 8 p.m. and in their, in their own time zones, yeah. So yeah, we can have like some, uh, some data on the backend that we can uh, fetch and do some analysis regarding this course, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm missing it. So you want everyone to test at different moments or you want everyone to test at the same moment? Uh, I think both. Uh, first, so yeah, uh, we can have like uh, the uh, test sessions at different times. But yeah, so, for, so we can first start analyzing the data. But maybe then we can also have like a, or set that just as, a, or think, uh, yeah, like set a, a time uh, where everyone's just start by testing the, 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 the backend. Yeah. Or maybe we can do both things at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very valuable. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Santiago. Uh, that, that's a really good idea. We really should. Because mm -hmm. when, yeah. we, when we tweet it, that's going to be that moment where, Oh yeah, look, there's an hour where a lot of people are going to click this and try it. And then, you know, that's a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Uh, let's, let's jump into the next topic, which is uh, Marco design questions. Marco, you had a, you had something you wanted to share. Yes. I wanted to share, uh, actually, hold on a second. Zenhub. Uh, won't load it for me. Oh, I'm getting errors. You want um, me to yeah, can, can you please just open the Zen Hub? I'm not sure what issue that is, uh, issue number. It's just um, a search, add more information to final results. I think it's in QA review. No, it's in progress. It's in the progress column. This one, the first one, exactly. <clears throat> and then I scroll down, I pasted a screenshot. In the comments below, is in loading. What's going on? And just scroll down to the bottom. What's what's happening down there? There's nothing. Should be. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Okay, so I, I added the additional information based on the Google uh, the sheet that uh, Vitor prepared. So like for starters, I just added um, like, you know, the parameters you initiated first and then results after the simulation because a lot of the additional data was referring to uh, what happens after the simulation. Um, you know, how many participants, total proposals, candidate proposals, active proposals, and so on. Uh, so for now, as a starters, I just put it in a table. Obviously, we could maybe group the proposals and make it more attractive visually or something like that. And then below that, we have the charts. Um, so that's my current proposal for that part. Yeah, you can click on that. That's great. Um, and also, like, it's easier for on a mobile to scale this when it's, like, everything in one column rather than having it on the side. Uh, like, that's for starters. Uh, I would like to get your feedback on that. And if you think we need to change anything or add more information. It looks great. Uh, I think this looks awesome. Uh, I, I'm, this is not real data, right? Uh, no, 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 no. It's just yeah. something but, made oh up. God, it started with 16 hatchers and they, they didn't get any new one? New no, people? no, no. I, I just like, you know, randomly type in numbers in there. So, Well, uh, their chart does look like that might have happened. So anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to talk shit about comments sometimes. Um, no, I think it looks great. I don't know. Does anyone else, uh, uh, maybe Lauren and Danny especially, do you guys have any opinions on this? I don't have any other opinions beyond. I think it looks great. <laughs> uh, in the in the in the Google sheet that we are prepared, uh, there are other uh, in, there's other information and data that all of you guys actually voted no. So like not to display that. It's like more getting into the details and you know detailed stuff. So. I left all that out and just put those who are, who are which are, which have been voted yes and uh, are most relevant for the user at this point. 
anyway, we can adjust it later on if needed. Once we get more user feedback, if someone, you know, is asking for more information, we can always, you know, maybe create a pop-up with like, you know, drill down to more details and more data. And we're like, we put it in a table or something like that and just put it in the modal view. I don't know, just brainstorming here. But yeah, I think for starters, it's, uh, it's enough. Danny, did you have any thoughts? I'm just still not clear on what indicators to look at to know if I did a good job. Like it says, do I think I did a good job? Analyze these charts. I don't know what I'm looking at. Uh, yes. It does. I don't know what to compare my results to in order to, to learn something here about whether I did a good job and how to do it better next time. You know, this is the challenge, right? Like we're putting, and, and maybe it was a design flaw. Maybe, maybe we're doing it wrong. I don't know, but we kind of made the decision early on that we wanted to challenge the user. That we want to say, yeah, you don't know what makes a good commons, do you? We better mm -hmm. fucking use CAD CAD and figure this shit out, right? But like, uh, and that's, and so I don't know, maybe that's a mistake, but it, it is part of the concept of like, yeah, this is, these are the results. Let's find out if you saved the world or not. You know, like you get, what do you think? Are these good enough? I mean, I think if you look at this and you see, 16 members and then results after those participants 16 you're like oh it's probably not good mm. <laughs> but i don't know i think it's awesome but i i am a little bit hesitant about how much we are challenging the user now are they coming here because they already know then this is fine this is perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's perfect. If they already know, this is great. But if they're completely new, this is very scary. They won't have an idea about any of it. So exactly. it, it, it's just it's just the user base. That's it. Otherwise, what you guys have done is fucking awesome for those that know. Yeah, and, and as Griff said, that was our approach initially. We wanted to create something for the people who already know something. And I, I guess I fall into the category for of you know completely new users who don't understand anything. Maybe okay, not but anything, something. But but still, uh, to me that would be confusing, and I would have to learn a lot. And we did provide uh, you know additional information throughout the game. Uh, you know, what is the funding pool? What is the hatch? You know, who are the hatchers? Um, you know, what, are, what is the reserve pool? And, you know, all that kind of stuff just to educate user as much as possible. So not for to complete newbies or newcomers that don't know anything, but at least to someone, like, so, uh, some people who know something to learn on the go. And I don't think like that the target audience for, uh, for, for this game is uh, are people who are completely new into this and have no idea what even commons is or something like that. So I, we made a decision at the very beginning, as Ruth said. So, so yeah, we, we, yeah, we want to challenge people actually. And, and as, as Griff said, I don't know, maybe if that's a good idea or not, uh, but for, for this stage, maybe, you know, uh, leap one, that's fine. Maybe leap two, we're going to make something completely new and awesome. And we're gonna, you know, think about the completely new user experience, and we want to onboard like everybody, you know, your, your grandma and, and my mom, and I don't know, you know. Well, but, no, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think you're, you're, you're. That's perfect. Stage two, we worry about everything else. I think you're absolutely on it. I guess one feedback I would share is, like. I'm working with communities on the ground right now who are pooling funds and thinking about things like this. So simply going through this has been educational to, to learn what is the commons and to learn about different ways that you can pool your funds and that these are per important parameters to understand if you're thinking about creating a commons. So like from an initial learning about those key concepts, I think it really delivers that and that's the feedback I've got is people actually understand the value of learning about these parameters and that you need to consider them when you're thinking about putting your funds together in a system like this. Um, but I just see it as step one and I also think like we want to make sure that that this is a flow if we're going to this is like you need to learn 
these concepts first and then move into leap two where we're going to teach you some more so even something about are you feeling confused stay tuned for the next episode right maybe something like that is what's what would help yeah and, and just the uh, yeah i very much think that as well that, that somehow however however that can be worded or worked is important mark marco yeah, and I still think uh, we have we can improve a lot here. You know, even even in leap one, to to educate people more and to kind of like I don't know, uh, you know, put them in their brain that stuff and mentally have them knowing what it actually takes to you know to build a, to create a common to design a commons. Uh, we can improve on that, obviously, but you know, for the time being and for this release, uh, I I think we should just you know draw the line and say okay, we're we're happy with this. With this amount, with that amount, with it, we're happy with you know with this level of you know whatever it is, and for the next we're gonna improve. Uh, and and once we get more user feedback, we're gonna improve on the go. And then leap two, we're gonna think about something completely different or new or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. I, I, I would I would just say that like leap one, you know, this is all coming together really nicely. The work Vitor is doing with the token engineering commons, it's like, it, the goal here is how do we, like the common stack, why are we even doing this, right? We want to try to get communities to be able to design their own economies. That is a fucking hard mission, okay? That is not gonna, it's not gonna be easy and we're not gonna probably succeed right out the gate, but we're, we're getting there, right? We have, this is like a very nice, a hundred one oh one level course of like design hey community design your own economy let's try to make this fun right now Vitor and the token engineering commons we're actually going to do it we're actually going to have a dashboard where people are choosing parameters voting on them and then deploying a real fucking DAO right this is going to be insane and then from there they have to then design an actual bonding curve and conviction voting DAO ah you know it's like uh, level one, level two, and then level 1603. Like it's going to be like, uh, you know, uh, but we're doing it. So like, maybe, maybe, maybe it fails guys. Like maybe we, maybe we can't get communities to design their own economies. I mean, I, I think we're lucky that it's the token engineering commons. So the token engineering community might be able to do this. Right. Um, but, uh, but then after, after we do it with the TE Commons, you know, and in the summer, the goal is, hey, look, we have all of this stuff ready. Who wants to design a commons? Like, seriously, you want to design a commons around orphans? Let's fucking do it, right? We're going to be there and we're going to give them the tools so that they don't rely on some blockchain devs to just design their economy for them, that they have the agency and they feel like this is their economy. They, they built it, they designed it this is for them you know so we'll see but it's all it's all coming together it's looking like it's good but hopefully the challenge isn't so big that it, it wasn't possible you know I, I think it's possible i think we can do it um anyway we ran out of time uh we, and we don't have time for really going to the boards is there any issues that you guys want to call out in the next like three minutes that are critical Uh, the one thing I just wanted to point out is having it so that when the mouse mouse is over, they, the the graphs or anywhere that there's a help file on that page, if the person mouse is over it, it, you should be able to click on that and bring up the more information. That one. Yeah, and, and I made a comment on that one. I just want to add uh, that we should just go through uh, each level. Uh, and like if if you, and like in the Figma, uh, go to the that screen, uh, add a comment where you want the tooltip and put a label what should be in the tooltip. That way, uh, Fabio uh, probably will have, you know, will know to, to add a tooltip on that area, specific area. And then, uh, in each tooltip, we should have like read more information or something like that, which then opens that uh, additional screen. But but just yeah, go through each of them and add it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, my original thought was just so that the mouse changes when you go over funding pool or RXC and know that you can click on it to open the, the additional information that's under help. Um, but I like what you're saying to go through and actually put speci specific text on each one. That's grander than my original thought. Because, be, yeah, because we already have tooltip in the front end, uh, was built previously by some synthesis guys. So we have it there. And we already put some text like that explains, you know, what a chart number is, you know, what stuff like that. So it's there in the front end. We just need the labels. We just need the content for the tooltips. And that's all. And I can do this. I saw you tag me on it. And you're like, can you do this? I can do this. I can like make a chart. You're amazing, Lauren. You're amazing. Thank you for thank you for diving in on this. Uh, it's a lot of work uh, that you're taking on that no one else really wants to do. So, like, seriously, you're a hero. You're a hero. Happy to help. I just want to say it's not that I don't want to do it. I'm just really grateful Lauren is here to do it because I just don't have the bandwidth. We still love you. Yeah, absolutely. It takes a team. Uh, okay, so any other, is there another uh, issue that someone wants to highlight before we call this a day? Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you guys so much. Uh, sorry for going over on your calls. Uh, thank you so much for this work. Uh, we're getting really close to the public release. Uh, we, we have some good ideas and it's okay if we wait to get it better we have one chance to really release this to as uh, something that's fucking awesome so let's do it that said we have to do it before vitor does it on the tec side okay? <laughs> no 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 you don't you 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 gotta come to tech for rams right now that's where it's at we are the team of the teams come on over merlin fabio vitor <laughs> lauren hey well you know marco can come too i mean you know everybody everybody can come danny come on come on over to my team Forget all these other teams. <laughs> other team. Come join my team. All right. I'm out. Love you. Bye, guys. Great work this week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Right. Goodbye.